Praise the Lord. Proclaim His name. That is what I want you to do today, is proclaim God's name. We have so much in our, in our life through God that we can just share it with people. It should be just coming out of us. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning as we come to worship. So glad to see you today as we come. Uh, you know, today is the first day of Advent. That's the season that we look forward to into coming into the new year. I mean, look forward to the coming of Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. And I don't have the Advent wreath out here. It's inside in the sanctuary. But I did want to share with you for a moment that this Sunday is the, sun, the candle of hope. Uh, it's when we have the hope that through Jesus Christ, God is in control, God is going to save us, and everything's going to be good. What a year for us to have that hope. We as Christians know that the things going on in this world is not going to conquer us because we have Jesus Christ in control of our lives. So as we celebrate Christmas, look forward to coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Messiah, while we celebrate this Sunday as we celebrate hope. It is good to welcome you today. Um, we had about 50-something in, in the inside church, but I do appreciate all of you who are taking caution and staying out here for car church uh, with the numbers going up right now. That gives us uh, more safety on the inside for those who are coming inside without it being a crowd. Uh, so I appreciate that. And we know that you're safe out here in your cars, that's for sure. So uh, just continue uh, to pray for us and pray for the church. But uh, God has blessed us, and I'm so thankful for all that God has done as he has worked through Crosswell Baptist through all of this that's happened. Pray for our sister churches in the community. Some of them have had to go virtual again. Uh, some are still inside. But just pray for their leadership as they try to plot the course as we continue to work through this. I'm just very thankful to the Lord that a vaccine is very soon in the works, and so uh, hopefully things are going to improve for 2021. Uh, so good to have you here as we worship this morning. I've heard Nathan's message already today. Let me tell you, he's got a great message for you today, and you're going to be blessed through that message. I look forward to hearing it again. And uh, um, um, Margaret's going to come and lead us in some Christmas songs today, and we look forward to that also. Would you join me as we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, I do thank you today and praise you for the possibility of worship. I thank you, Lord, that we've learned to worship this way this year in different ways. But Father, it, it works, and we're just so thankful that we're able to come together as your people and to lift up praises to you and to study your word and to pray together and to worship as you intend us to worship. Father, I pray for Nathan this morning as he brings the message. Speak to him, Lord, to our hearts. Be with Margaret as she leads the music, Lord, and may that music be an offering of praise to you. Now, Lord, bless this service, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Croswell. Join us in worship.
so good to see you this morning. I hope you are having a great morning so far and that you've had a great week. Um, now that Thanksgiving's over, you can fully get into the Christmas spirit. And um, how many of you, I guess, honk your horn if you have decorated your tree so far? Oh, just a couple, just a couple. A lot of people are um, fully decorated already. Um, and that's one of my favorite parts of Christmas is the decorations that you get to see and um, all that goes into that. And one of the major um, decoration pieces is a star. You'll see them all over the place. And um, it reminds me of um, the nursery rhyme where you find the first star and you make a wish. And I remember as a little girl doing that and closing my eyes and making, or first off, looking up at the dark sky, trying to find the first star. And whenever I found it, closing my eyes and making a wish. And I don't really remember about the wishes coming true or not, but I remember doing that. But I remember looking with anticipation, like trying to find it. And so whenever I think of a star at, the Christ at Christmas time, I think that that's what we should focus on, is looking with anticipation for the Christmas season. And a lot of people are going to come up to you and maybe a phone call or whatever and say, are you ready for Christmas? And it might be, are you decorate? Is your house decorated yet? Or are you finished with your Christmas shopping? And all of that is kind of how we answer it. But I want us to kind of change our perspective this year and say that we're ready for the Christ of Christmas and celebrating the birth of our Savior. And if we recognize that this year is different as it has been for months, we can recognize that we, if we change our perspective, our Christmas can be a little different this year and maybe a little bit more sweeter because we recognize the true meaning of Christmas. We recognize the true need of a Savior in our world. And we recognize that if we focus our hearts and our minds on Him, that He will bless us with a great time, um, no matter what that looks like. If it's different than our traditions or different than what we've done, Christ is always the same. And so we have the hope um, in Revelation, it, calls that, it says that Jesus is the bright morning star and that we can have that hope in Him um, because of what He's done for us. So my prayer for you is that that's what your focus is as you're preparing for Christmas, is that you're anticipating Christ and the great things that He's going to do for us. Let's pray. God, we thank You for the great things that You do for us all throughout um, our lives. Father, There's um, if You talk to someone, there's, there's always something where they're going to say, that God has um, blessed them and where they can turn back and look and see the great things that you've done in their lives. So God, I just pray that we're able to focus our hearts and our minds on the great things that you've done for us, Father, and recognize that even if things are different than what we've um, wanted them to be or different than what they've always been, that God, you still give us um, blessings and that um, you still prepare our, you or can prepare our hearts and our minds for great things to come. So God, as we enter into the Christmas time and we decorate and we make lists and we check off lists and we do all the things that Christmas involves, Father, may our hearts stay focused on you. May we recognize the true Christ in Christmas and recognize the, the great gift that you gave us. Father, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. I think the temperature has dropped a little bit out here. <laughs>
Y'all join us in worship. Good morning, Crosswell. How are we today? I know she's already asked, but I didn't get to see. How many of you have already have your, dec- your um, Christmas decorations up? Yes? All right, so if you haven't got your Christmas decorations up, you're behind because it's Christmas time. Um, there are some people who have already had their Christmas decorations up before Thanksgiving. And I know that it's real quick to say, well, we got to wait for Thanksgiving to get through. And I understand that. But today, in, in 2020, because of everything going on, they, they went ahead and put their stuff er, up early. And the reason why is we're living in a time that it's just, it could be depressing if we let it. But, but guys, we need to smile. We need to be happy. And that's why they're putting their de- Christmas decorations up early, just for that sense. They're looking and searching for joy and happiness. Um, and they're looking just to be happy again. Um, so this morning... What I would like to do, um, well, let me start with a word of prayer, and then we'll go into today's um, sermon today. God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you so much for, again, just the ability to be with, um, as, to be together as a church. Uh, God, even if that means outside, because church can still be outside. Uh, it's all about the people. And God, we, we come today just to come and adore you. We come and bow down and worship you. And that is what we're giving to you this hour as our worship. We are in adoration of you, God, and we just love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let me start off by asking this simple question. What gets you excited? What is it, be thinking about that, what is it that when you see it or you do it or you experience it, it gets you excited? It puts a smile on your face. I I instantly think of Pastor Charles because Pastor Charles, he is an Italian and you know exactly what he's feeling because he's gonna just show it. That's just who he is. He's gonna show it. And let me tell you, and y'all all all know this about him. When that man finds a good deal or a sale item, he gets excited, doesn't he? So, and and I'm not talking about 25% off, 30% off. I'm talking about it's got to be clearance. It's 90% off. And for instance, he might find a teddy bear right after Valentine's Day, and he gets so excited, um, he'll call me up and say, Nathan, you got to go get that teddy bear. It's 90% off, and he'll get as much as he can. And then while he's in the store, because he's got to share it with everybody because he's so excited, he will go and tell people all throughout the store, y'all got to go get that teddy bear because it's on sale. And that man I've never seen get so excited about a sale. He loves to find sales and he gets excited and he just comes out. So I ask you, what is it like that that gets you excited? 
Well, today, that's where we're coming from. In 1 Chronicles chapter 13, a little backstory is we're talking about King David. Now, we all know King David. Uh, um, and here he's becoming king. And the Ark of the Covenant was in his uh, the city of Judah, and he was trying to get it. Because he became king, he wanted to make it a national thing. So he wanted to move the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, so it can be a nationally known thing. And in First Chronicles 16 is where we're going to pick up in the passage today. He brings the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, what is the Ark of the Covenant? Now, if you don't know, it's in the Old Testament, God was represented by the Ark of the Covenant. And they carried the Ark of the Covenant everywhere they went. The Israelites did everywhere they went. And when they settled in a place, they would either put it in a temple or put it in a tent. And at this place, that is where King David, because he put it in Jerusalem, he put it in a tent. Well, this is where we're picking up with verse uh, in First Chronicles um, chapter 16. He's now put it in, this, uh, in Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, and he just feels compelled because he's so excited to have the Ark of the Covenant in the national place of Jerusalem, the national city of Jerusalem. He gets so excited that he has to sing a song, and he has, he has someone sing a psalm. And the psalm that they use is actually um, Psalm 105 and Psalm 95. And that is what we're going to look at. So that's the context of what we're looking at today in the scripture. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, starting with verse 8, we're going to see what this psalm actually says. And it says, verse 8, it says, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the, among the nations what he has done. Now, let's stop there. Praise the Lord. Proclaim His name. That is what I want you to do today, is proclaim God's name and praise the Lord. So what does that mean to proclaim His name? It, mean, it means to announce publicly. So what I want you to do today is I want you to share the gospel. I want you to tell about how great Jesus is publicly. Um, it's, it's, Let's announce to our family. Let's announce to our friends. Let's announce to our coworkers or, or even at school, at our jobs. Who is God to you? Take that out. Proclaim his name. Make it known what God has done for you. Because He, I know he has done many things. He has blessed us in so many ways. So what I'm challenging you this week, be thinking about it. As the sermon keeps going, I want you to think of one person I challenge you to think of one person this week that you can talk to and tell them what Christ has done for you in your life. Because that's what sharing the gospel is all about, is telling your story. What has God done for you? It says, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make it known among, among the nations what he has done. Go tell people what he has done for you. Verse nine says, sing to him, sing praise to him, tell all of his wonderful acts. Sing to God. I know some of you love to sing. There are some of you that it doesn't take a song. You can just sing in your house. You can sing while you're doing chores or doing, you know, doing the dishes. Just sing to God. Um, if you don't sing, some of you may be like myself where you don't have what you think is a good voice. So singing's not your thing, right? Well, dance. If you love to dance, dance. There's nothing wrong with dancing. Dance unto God. Celebrate. Singing is a form of celebration. So if you don't sing, just celebrate. Celebrate and say, just think about all the things that God, God has done for you and rejoice in that, celebrating that. Singing, again, is a form of celebration, and it's just declaring all that Christ, what he has done for you. And that alone should make you smile. It should get you happy. It should get you excited. Just like Charles with a sale, when he finds one, he gets excited. He's got to go share it with people. We have so much in our, in our life through God that we can just share it with people. It should be just coming out of us because we're so excited about what God has done for us. Verse 10 says, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Now take notice of what this, these verses just said. It says, seek the Lord, seek his strength, and seek him always, seek his face. 
Church, when we do that, when we seek the Lord, we seek His strength and we seek Him always, we can do nothing else but rejoice. And that is where we can rejoice in the middle of bad times because we're thinking about, it's, we're thinking about all that He has done for Him and we're seeking after Him. And when you seek after Him, oh my goodness, when you seek after Him, actually Scripture says, seek after me and I will show you great and mighty things. When you seek after God, great and mighty things will happen and you can't help but to be excited about it. You can't help to go share it. You can't help to be happy. Verse 15, it says, he remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. Now the covenant that we have in the new covenant is we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We have salvation and we have a promise that he will never leave us, never forsake us. God will always be with us. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. That is the promise that we have. That is the new covenant that we have. That alone is, should get you excited that we have Christ with us and he's never gonna leave us. But more than that, not just here on earth, but we have an, an eternal an uh, eternal home in heaven to look forward to. We can be with the Son of God face to face. We can be with God himself. That alone should get you excited. That alone should get you happy and ready to rejoice. And you shouldn't be able to contain it. So celebrate today that we have Christ Jesus. He is with us. Verse 23 says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of our praise. I love that last line, worthy of our praise. We can celebrate, we can praise God because what we're worshiping is worthy of that worship. We can worship today because what we're worshiping is worthy of that worship. So praise his name. So the question comes down to is, how can you praise God in bad times? How can you praise God even in hard times? And it goes back to what Allison was saying in her children's message. It's all about perspective. It really is all about perspective. It's awareness. Going back to the Ark of the Covenant, they were aware that the Ark of the Covenant was a representation of God. We need to be aware of what God is doing in our life. Again, how can you proclaim it? You need to be aware of it. So worship is being aware of what God is doing in your life. It comes from knowledge of Christ, knowing who Christ is, knowing the word, right? So knowing who Christ is, what he has done for you, and knowing the word. The word, meaning uh, the word became flesh, right? In John 1, 1, the word became flesh. So it is knowing who Jesus is, but it's also reading his Bible and understanding more and more about who Jesus is. That is what the Bible is there for. We worship God by being aware of what he has done for us and who he is. One definition of worship would be to give worth to someone or something, in today's society, we, it has no problem yelling for their favorite teams and wearing their favorite jerseys, defending them like they're on the actual team. I always find that funny is that when you hear Clemson fans and Carolina fans, and especially those Alabama fans, when they say, we, we're going to win this game, we're going to do this, and you have to step back and go, we, are you on the team? But in some people's minds, they are a part of that team. And it's what they're going to do. And they have, so going back, we are in a society that has no problem yelling for their, their favorite teams and yelling for, you know, showing off their jerseys for that team as if they're a part. But when it comes to God, it's dubbed down to, it's got to stay personal. So we can yell and shout about our favorite football teams and our favorite baseball teams. But when it comes to God, we got to be personal. That's just for us. That's wrong. That's so wrong. When it comes to God, we should be shouting it out, how great he is. Praise his name, give glory to him. 
Don't dub it down. Don't keep it behind your closed doors. Shout out to the rooftops who God is to you and what he has done for you. Praise his name. Celebrate. Worship is not something you attend. Sure, we come to church, but it only becomes worship when we take part. Let me say that again. Worship is not something that you attend. It's something that you take part in. So it is possible to be in church and not worship because worship is something that we take part in. So let's take part in worship. Let's worship God today. Let's worship as a church. We make a living. This is a church, or this is a quote by Winston Churchill. He, Winston Churchill says, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life out of what we give. We make a living by what we get. That's our, our livelihood, our careers, and that's what we get, right? But we make a life out of what we give. Now, I really wanna focus in on that because I love it. It says, worship is our way of giving back to God. When we give back to God and we worship to God and we recognize him as the one true God, Jesus is Lord, and you start celebrating that, you are given life, life of abundance, but not only just life here of abundance here on earth, but you're also given eternal life. And that alone is worth celebrating. So again, I say again, worship, celebrate, sing, dance, rejoice, because we, we have so much to be thankful for. Isn't that what Christmas is all about? Is that not what Christmas is all about? Just proclaiming and worshiping and celebrating that Jesus came here on earth to die. For our, and to give us salvation. That's what the whole Christmas season's about. So worship and celebrate all throughout this Christmas season. Psalms 29, two says, ascribe to the Lord, the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. Just sometimes we have to just sit back and just go, wow. Sometimes you just look at, just think of, for instance, when I was out in the Rocky Mountains or in the mountains, Anytime I'm in the mountains, to be honest with you, I just look back at the landscape and I just see the view that God has painted there and I go, wow. Or maybe you are like me where you're, you get up early sometimes and you see a sunrise or maybe for you, it's not sunrise, it's sunset. And you just, you see the beautiful pinks and the beautiful oranges in the sunsets and the sunrises and it's just like, wow. Sometimes we just need to step back and just look at what God has done and just be in all of it. Be in just completely in all of it. Psalms 95, 6 says, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. So today I invite you and I challenge you come, let us bow down. Come, let us adore Him, as Margaret sang earlier. Come, let us worship God. And a part of that worship is declaring who he is, proclaiming it publicly, who God is. So again, before I close today, I wanna remind you of that challenge. Think of one person. Who is it? I, would, I want you to go tell that one person this week, just share the gospel with him. And when I mean share the gospel, I mean declare who, what God has done for you. Just tell that to one person this week. What has God done for you? And just go and tell that to one person this week. Would you pray with me as we close? Heavenly Father, Lord, you give us so much. You give us so much of abundance, God. And God, I pray, Lord, that we get excited. Your spirit just helps us to get excited about who you are and what you have done for us. Help us to be aware of all these things that you have done for us so that we have love for you and joy for you that just overflows. It, we can't contain it inside. We get so excited that we just have nothing else that we can do but, but to go tell people. God, I pray, Lord, for the people listening right now that you get them excited. You help them to celebrate in your spirit, Lord. Celebrate who you are. And God, I pray, Lord, for those opportunities. I'm praying and expecting of those opportunities, God, that you're gonna give us this week, that you give us the time and the opportunities to share with someone about all that you've done. And God, when that opportunity comes, I pray, Lord, for boldness, 
that we may have the strength, we may have the words, and we may have the boldness to go out and just tell them. Help us not to overcomplicate, because that is what we do so, so much as people and Christians, Lord. We overcomplicate it. We gotta help us just to keep it simple, and just all it is is just us telling one other person about what you've done for us, and that should be so easy. So God, I pray, Lord, now for those opportunities that you would bless them. That God, thank you, Lord, for this time together. And God, we do love you and we do praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being here. It has been an honor and a privilege just to speak with you today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Pastor Charles, Miss Cindy, and myself, and um, Allison and Lauren probably will meet you on the side over here as you go by. Y'all have a good week. <laughs>